Hi, I'm Bob Lobel, New England sports legends, and uh, we're joined today by Travis Roy, uh, whose story is uh, is legendary. And I'm really happy you were able to make it here today, and uh, it's good to see you. You look great. Uh, I'm I'm happy to be here. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's come a long ways, um, but uh, but right now things are pretty good. What uh, in in terms of questions and in terms of dealing with people, uh, what's the question that's asked you most? Uh. Probably the, the the biggest one is just sort of how do I do it, um, you know, just kind of yeah. just just kind of the big big scope and um, and it, it's I I have a I have a very fortunate answer to that. Um, I have really good family, I have really good friends, um, and that have been there um, from that very first day on. Um, I, I've got good insurance. Um, the NCAA had a has a catastrophic insurance policy between that and my. My mother's policy as an administrator um, up in Maine, uh, being a principal. Um, when you have the right insurance, it, uh, it makes life a whole lot easier. When you've got the right care, uh, I have 24-hour care, and I'm very fortunate to have that and to have the bills picked up by an insurance. And, and thirdly, going again back to shortly after my injury in that, the first days, weeks, and months, um, there was a good amount of money raised um, after my injury. Right. And, uh, and I've, I've got a nice home, and uh, I've always had the right adaptive equipment, the right wheelchair, the, the right computer, and, you know, as good as my insurance was, there were gaps and holes. And uh, so I always say when you've got a good family, when you've got uh, good friends, when you've got good insurance, when, when you have a little bit of um, some financial resources to, to help stabilize things. I thought, I, I've always felt that uh, Jackie Parker has been... Uh, I don't know how to describe him, but I, he has been uh, an extraordinary friend. Because every time I see him, he talk, he always talks about spending time with you. And uh, yeah. I don't know how much time you guys spend together, but I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of what he's done. He he has been he's a very special person in my life. Uh, uh, I've I've got an amazing dad, but uh, uh, coach coach is sort of a mix of uh, that fatherly figure, but also just a best friend. Um, and uh, la last night I was out to eat with uh, he and his wife and, and, uh, and, and his daughter. His daughter paid. It was a, <laughs> it was it was a it was a late uh, Father's Day uh, Father's Day outing. But um, but it, yeah, I, I I just he's a fascinating man. I mean, he's a smart man, and yeah. he's uh, he's got a he's got a big heart. I know for a long time he didn't want to show that too much, but uh, he's a le I mean, but um, Billy Cleary, him, uh, Lenny Siglarski, they're all they're legends in there. Or Jerry York, they're Jerry legends York, in absolutely. Their own right. It's and uh, people don't understand how fortunate we are the, the the college coaching that's gone on here the last 50 years really um, or more um, and uh, but but they're, first of all they're smart men I mean Co Coach Parker is a is a very smart man um, and uh, it was interesting you know a after my after my accident I was um, I came back to BU and, and they wanted to keep me involved with the program and Coach Parker came down to my dorm and I said you know what. What do, you, what do you want to do? You know, we, we'd like to keep you involved. What, what do you want to do? And I said, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, I have no idea. And he's like, well, we're going to give you a title. You're going to be our video coordinator. So it doesn't mean a thing, but, but we'll put you <laughs> in the program. You're the video coordinator. You know, come up to the games. Come, come as often as you like. You know, let's, let's see how we can do this. And um, so I, I was really, my, my, my two um, real skills with hockey, one was I was, I was highly skilled. I, I had good vision. Um, as well, I had that sixth sense. But if there, if I did have a fault, it was just systems, you know. Um, and so when I would sit up there after my injury, trying to figure out breakouts and four checks and power plays, and and I, I just couldn't pick up on any of it. And then I go down to the locker room, and I, and I knew things weren't flowing, you know. And, and in between periods, and I'm like, oh boy, they got a whole, they got to start a whole new system, or whatever. And coach would be like, we're just gonna move the winger from the hash marks halfway up to the blue line. <laughs> and all of a sudden, bam, there's your passing lane, and, and the breakout's working and smooth, smooth. And um, so it's too bad. I, I, I was intimidated by his, uh, see why. his ability to see what's going on on the ice, you know, um, systems-wise. 
Yeah. Um, but as a coach, yeah, great. Uh, you know, as a recruiter, great. But as a as a person, uh, I think even better. And uh, well, that's good. I mean, I I think. Yeah. Uh, does everything for you start with the accident? Uh, well, I, I mean, just so I'm going in the right direction. Uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, uh, well, when you are in a situation like this or talk to an audience, uh, they want to, I guess, find out about Travis uh, Roy after the accident. Yeah. Travis Roy, not Travis Roy before the accident. Yeah. So what I'm asking you is, has it pretty much come down to you that everything starts for you with the accident? You know what, for the first probably 10 years, it, it'll be 19 years, oh my uh, God. October 20th. I mean, it, it's, it is, it's incredible. Um, you know, next year, half my life, I will lived in, a, in this condition, which just blows my mind. So for the first, certainly the first five years, and, and, and close to the first 10 years, it was. It was Travis Roy, you know, Boston University Arctic player paralyzed in his first game. And, um, and I, I was never really comfortable with that. I, I, I was known for breaking my neck, you know, in yeah. base class, known for that 11 seconds. And, um, and you know, I, I did go back to school. We, we started the Travis Roy Foundation. I was trying to kind of figure out my life. and. Um, so yeah, for, for more or less the first 10 years, it was the accident. But probably what I'm most proud of um, is, and, it, and it's really kind of starting to show in, in the last nine years or not, um, but it's, it's I, I like to believe my story is much more than just that accident now. Um, the, the Travis Wright Foundation's raised over $5 million um, for, for research, for individual grants, trying to provide the right wheelchairs and voice activated computers. As I say, my family and I were very fortunate to have the right equipment um, and to, to be able to live as independently as I have. And, and it's always been a goal of ours to, to give back, to make sure other people have similar opportunities. And, and I'm still hopeful that, that the research is gonna, I, I don't know that if I'm gonna walk again, um, but if I could have you know, use of my hands, if I could have the ability to transfer in and out of bed, um, and, and I haven't given up on walking by any means, but uh, 19 years in a wheelchair is a long time, and uh, the muscles, the bones, you know, things things change. It's going to be it's going to be a battle if that uh, if when that day comes. But um, uh, lost my lost my. No, train no, we're thing. talking about you know, your yeah. your growth so, after right. you move past the first 10 years. Um, my my speaking career, you know, for the first. I graduated from BU in 2000. I spent five years just, you know, trying to create this career as a as a motivational speaker, and and I'd speak at Rotary clubs, and I'd speak at uh, this women's pre-release uh, detention center, and I'd oh speak at a Catholic women's divorced and widowed club, and I'd speak at just anywhere I could, and uh, it was there were some interesting audiences. I can um, imagine. But uh, but the last ten years, I, I've been all around this country speaking. At, Fortune 500 companies, and uh, um, it you know just really created a, a nice career. So, so what's nice is I feel like um, I've created something I, I, that I've that, it's, that that my story since my injuries there's much more than just that 11 seconds, and and you know uh, feeling bad for you know kid from Maine that you know had an unfortunate incident, and it's so now now I feel like. Um, now I'm more comfortable with um, the the little bit of attention that my story continues to to get. That it's so it is it is much more exactly than than the accident. It's what you've been able to create, uh, and it's taken a while, it's taken almost 20 years to it, bring you to here to this moment. And yeah, yeah, but it's um the other the other piece to it though that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the work of the foundation. I've been been pleased with the career I've kind of created with with the speaking that I do. But the other thing that's when I think of my story, I, I think of it as, yeah, I'm I'm the one you know in front of the camera, now, but but I, I just think of all of us that have that have made this story successful. You know, we talked about Coach Parker, my my family, my friends. There are so many people out there that I've never met 
that whether they sent in a check, whether they um, donated to the foundation, whether they um, sent, you know, just a, a, a random email that I get uh, from time to time. There's so many people, and I felt this from the very first day on, and I feel it as much uh, even today, that are just rooting for me, you know, and that have wanted to, wanted to see that, that uh, what, what was a devastating moment in a, you know, terrible, terrible time, that, uh, that, that we made this a pretty, I don't want to say it's a happy ending, but it's certainly a, a productive and uh, life that, that's got a lot of value. And, um, and, I, and, and everybody that's wished me good thoughts or, or said a prayer or um, has come in contact with my life, I think we can all feel good about how this story's turned out. I'm going to give an opportunity to talk about the websites and everything. So don't let me forget that the key information. But that's, that's right. not we're here. But I, we ought to I, I, I take could care less about. Them. I know that you could care less about that. But I will. You might as well. What the heck? We're, sure. We are tied, we want to, let's not do that right now. But I would yeah. uh, move along and, and ask. There was, well, I have two questions. I, the first one was about your parents, but I'm going to put that on uh, hold. So remind me if I forget. The next one is, is spirituality. Uh, ha, ha, are you a spiritual person, religious person? What's uh, the deal? It's it's been interesting. My, uh, it, you know, I I guess it's kind of cliche. You know, they say it's kind of a a lifelong experience, kind of a faith. And uh, I, I I a friend of mine, good friend of mine, he said after my accident, I don't understand it. He said, you know, you, you kind of pray for you know good things, and you know after my injury, like. So many people were praying for me, and, and I got holy water sent from around the world, and hmm. cards, and, and very, uh, numerous kind of, um, and, and it was hard to, I kept thinking, you know, if all these people are praying for me, if all these people are, you know, just wishing good things for me, and, that, and for things to get better, that somehow, some way, if, if there's any, any, you know, value to that, that, that somehow I'm going to walk or somehow I'm going to, you know, see a significant improvement. And it, um, and it never happened. Um, but when I got around my 10 year anniversary, I started to think a little differently about the prayers and the cards and the, and the support that I've had. And all of a sudden it dawned on to me that maybe it's not so much about that I walk away, you know, that everything is perfect and everything gets fixed. Maybe it's more just People hoping that that I continue to have the strength to, to kind of live a productive life, you know. I that, get it. Uh, and all of a sudden, like I was like, oh, wow, you know, those prayers, those prayers did get answered, you know. That, uh, as I say, the quality of my life, the it's it's really high for being a high level quadriplegic, um, and. Uh, so I, I do. I like to think at, at night. I, I say my prayers every night when I go to bed. Uh, I, I like to certainly believe in a higher power. And, and do I go to church every Sunday? Uh, no. I, I will say I've, I've got a goal that in my life to, to read the entire Bible, and I've kind of come and go from that. But uh, more just to, to understand it and be aware of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do like believing in a higher power. I, I, I like to believe that there's something more. Um, after this life, and um, you know, we'll see. Can you feel the uh, wherever you go, the empathy? You can almost—I'm sure you can almost read people's minds, saying, "Oh my God, there's Travis. Uh, why did that happen to him? I don't think I could handle that. You know, he's got so much courage. I, w I wish there was something I could do or say to to make it all better." And I think that's the overriding thing. I think people just say, "I wish there was something I could do or say." Uh, I think I think for a while that's the way it was, yeah. but but I actually think more recently, when people see me and meet me, and I think they walk about or walk away saying, "He's he's doing fine, <laughs> he's good." And not only that, I think some people say, "God, if he's doing that well with his challenges, I I, I could probably get a little bit more out of my life." You well, know, that is so. That is really yeah. uh, that's and uh, it's a pretty spiritual. Uh, Position. And that's and and it, it is it it is it is. I I, I so I, I I give speeches to corporate groups to high schools to college kids and um, 
you know, throughout New England, across the country, and uh, and it's always interesting that um, uh, I say it's not it's not like it's not quite the same as scoring a game-winning goal, you know, when you get done. It's not it's not quite that elation, but but there's something that's really cool when you roll off that stage or when you walk away from the group, and 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 I'm and it's it's not ego. It's not it's it's just knowing that. You can see that you've you've had an impact on somebody's life. Somebody's life. Yeah. You don't know. Don't worry about the um, what's going on. I don't know. That's all right. It's not a dentist office. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, let me ask you about. Uh, yeah, I, I get the connection. I, I understand when you walk off that this stage. Feels, I, made a, I made the connection. It feels it feels good. You know, it, it, it's a nice uh, it's a nice feeling. And again, it, it makes me feel like my my, my biggest goal after my injury. I just wanted to be a productive part of society. It sounds so basic, but most most high-level quadriplegics are generally a, a drain on society in one way or another. You know, whether it's the, you know, through Medicaid or Medicare, or, you know, the, um, but you know, to be able to make a living and to to be able to give back. But it's the Look, foundation you know that speak. you are a productive part of society. Yeah, exactly. You know that you've got. You know that yeah. you've gotten. To yeah. that goal, and it feels good. Yeah. It feels feels really good. You know, yeah. uh, your parents, they not only do you end up worrying about yourself and dealing with everything you have to deal psychologically, uh, the difficulty, the collateral. Let me put it this way: the collateral damage. Uh, I know you're shaking your head and you say, "Wow, people yeah. just don't get the collateral damage." Well, it's. Um it was it was one of the recurring thoughts that I had for the four months that I was in two and a half months in the ICU and, and another month and a half or so in the op in uh, inpatient rehab before they flew me down to Atlanta and I I just I hated like let it me be my problem let it be my burden let me deal with it don't let it affect everyone else's life you know and um, and it is, it has been a priority of my life, and thank goodness through good insurance to have the 24-hour home care. Um, I have done everything I can to, you know, a for me to be as independent as possible, but certainly, you know, uh, I did not. I wanted to make sure my parents, my sister, um, that they lived their lives as burden free as possible. Now, on a daily basis, um, I, I think I'm pretty successful at that. I think that my parents have been able to live their life and do their things, and uh, same with my sister. Um, on an emotional side, uh, there's no way. It, 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 this can't be a, a burden, that it, that it weighs on them. And, uh, and um, we, we, we're always trying to make the best of this. But the highs are not near what they were before my injury, and um, and you don't focus on those things. But in the back of our minds, we all know that everything is everything is compromised. You know, um, nothing is uh, fully gratifying. You know, uh, but uh, but you find the things that you can still enjoy together, and that. Um, and and you make sure you make those a, a regular part of your life. I mean, I I enjoy good food. I enjoy pulling recipes off the internet. I like going to new restaurants. Um, I can enjoy that with my family. My mother loves to pull out a recipe and and, and we'll cook something fun. And um, with my dad, uh, he and I we've we've always had a common uh, enjoyment out of out of motorsports. Um, so you know we we can still share that together a little bit. And, um, and uh, but but life life becomes really simple, uh, and and it's actually I didn't think there were any gifts to come out of this injury uh, in this situation. But but if there's one thing that I do feel that um, I have a my view on life is it's it's very simple, and uh, the things that I see my friends and my peers and just people in general stress over the the you know the, all the marketing and the commercialization, uh, you know, I, I, none of that means anything to me. You know, if as long as I've got 
my family around me, my friends. As I say, I mean, last night just going out to you with Coach Parker, good steak. I mean, that two hours, that's 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 what makes life rich. You know, that's what makes. Um, and I have a I have a deep appreciation for those moments, and I um, and I am constantly trying to to make those regular occurrences in my life, and um, um, so it's not. Uh, it's not about having the fancy car. It's not about, I don't even know what, you know, I, you know, I don't have a, I'm, I'm, I don't have a, you know, an iPhone. I, I could give a crap about that. You know, I, I, I want real time. I want real conversation. Um, and, uh, and, and, and my life on a daily, weekly, annual basis has a lot of that in it um, with my family and friends. And uh, so it's, uh, so yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm a little ahead of the, ahead of the pack in, uh, in appreciating what's, what to me is is real, what's truth. You know, pretty amazing, uh, amazing story because I think anybody I've ever talked to or interviewed would would never uh, would never go there, would never go to the places that you've uh, gone, whether it's because you were forced to go there, because you wanted to go there because you had a choice to go there because, but, but is that, is that you? I mean, is that, you look into that camera and there's all these people that, you know, reached out to help you and said prayers for you and sent money to the foundation and everything else. I mean, did they know you? Do they, I mean, can we? So, I, I've always been pretty open, I've been open and honest about, you know, my, my, my book, 11 Seconds, that, Came out shortly after my injury, and I, and I updated my 10-year anniversary with with some of the different things that changed my life. But um, it's a really good question because, as open as I am, and I'm and I'm and I share most every aspect of my life. But but the truth of it is, inside I have an inner dialogue, and as I mentioned, I'm always trying to make the best of this. But this isn't. This is only a portion. People only get to see my family. Only get to see the public. Only gets to see a portion of, of who I am. I know. I, you know. Don't ask me how I know. I know. I know. There's an inner dialogue. I know. There's a whole other world in there. I I miss hockey as much today as I did um, when they carted me off the off the ice, and I knew that I would never play again. Um, I. Um, you know, there's no, I, I, in, mentally, I'm still as attracted to a attractive woman as, as any, any other time in my life. And, and I cannot explore and interact and um, have that relationship that I'd like to have. Um, uh, and just physically, to, to not be able to, you know, I spent my summers in Vermont with my family, and not to be able to be on the, the rocks jumping off the cliffs with my nieces and my nephews, um, not to be able to, um, you know, teach my nephew how to skate or, you know, just go out and, you know, play around on the ice. Um, there's always constantly these thoughts that, that I would be doing, that I would wish I could do, that, that um, I don't express them, I don't share them, I don't... Um, but they're constantly going through my mind. Yeah, and no it's, doubt uh, about it. And it's, um, I've always said, I, I, I've never been angry, never been mad, never, although it's funny, the, the older I get, there's actually a little bit more of that than, than there ever was before. The, the predominant feeling throughout this, uh, always, is just sadness. You know, there, there is, there's a lot of loss. I mean, you can't, you can't deny it. Um, I don't, I don't focus on that. I choose not to focus okay. on that because it doesn't get me anywhere. But it's there. But it is, it is constantly there. I mean, I, I can't, I can't deny it. There, there is, and I, and I, and I insulate myself uh, pretty well from it because um, it, it is. It's really, it's really sad. I, I, one of the things that I talk about in my, in my speeches, I, I always, I always had a desire. I, I just wanted to see how good I could be. And, and, you know, mainly that pertained to hockey. 
you know, could I play Division One hockey? Could I, could I play in the AHL? Could I play in the NHL? Could I make the Olympic team? And and it was always, it was just, it's what it was my fuel. It's what burned inside. Like, I just wanted to see how good I could be, and uh, and it was more black and white with hockey because you can you know you can uh, judge that pretty quickly. You know, at some point it comes to an end, and you only made it to this point, and that's it. Um, but it, it certainly has rolled over to just life in general. You know, I, 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 I still want to be the best person I can be. You know, it's not, it's, it's not as fun. It's not nearly as fun as, no, as uh, drop, you know, a bag of pucks and lacing up the skates. But, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's more, it's a mental challenge every day, you know, and, uh, but, um, but I, I know how fortunate I am to have the opportunities I have, and I, 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 I just couldn't, um, couldn't uh, live with myself if I didn't see how, how much I could maximize those opportunities. I totally understand, as you say, uh, how good you could be. And you know, the right thing for me to say, all right, I know what the right thing for me to say is, is that, oh, come on, Travis, how nobody could be as good in this condition as you are. You've been, how, you know, you could be good in hockey, but that's nothing compared to how, how good an inspiration you've been. But you know what, I, it doesn't balance out. Uh, you know, it, yeah. it, there's always a, a minus. And I, you know, I get it. You don't have to talk about it. You can talk about it if you want, but yeah. I, it's there. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's ugh, you know, I'll be, I'll be, as I said, I'll be 40 years old in April. Um, and I know I'm still young, but, but uh, it, it is interesting how we, how we kind of keep learning, gaining a little wisdom and how things wisdom. change. Wisdom is uh, a big thing. It, it, it sure is. And, uh, one of the things that, you know, that uh, I realized was um, for the first 20 years of my life, I had a passion. Every day I woke up with a passion. I, I couldn't wait to get to the rink. I couldn't wait to go to the side of the, the house and shoot pucks. I couldn't wait to go to a buddy's house and play street hockey. And I just, you know, I just constantly on my mind. You know, hockey is just, it was a love. It was a true love. And it just can't, I can't understate that. Um, but the last... 19 years, um, I feel like my life, it, it has a purpose. And, uh, and as I mentioned, it was a lot more fun to have a passion and, and to have that every day, but, but it, it gives my life um, a lot of value, a lot of meaning to, to wake up and, and, and have a purpose. You know, and it's twofold, as I, as I mentioned, through the, through the work of the foundation and, and through, through the, um, the speaking that I do. We can put the foundation on the, underneath the screen. We'll put it there. That'd be and, great. Uh, okay, that, that'll all be taken care of. Listen, uh, thanks. Oh, it's, it's fun. That was quick. Um, I, and, uh, well, yeah. you know what? We spent some time here and it did, did go fast, but yeah. it was a very uh, meaningful uh, mm. half hour or so for me, and I really appreciate you being as, as sharing with you. I know all you right. shared some stuff that you don't usually share. Well, and, and uh, yeah, it, I uh, I did, but it's um, it's nice to actually have time to have a real conversation, not see everything get you know put on the on the editing floor. And uh, but I, I you know I just also want to take a moment to just just thank the people out there that, as I mentioned, that that uh, continue to support me and continue to root for me, and uh, we're uh, we're making uh, we're we're doing we're doing all right, and uh, and I thank them. We're doing all right and uh, we thank him. We'll be back, I'm Bob LaBelle. Are you looking to get in the best shape of your life? Stop into Precision Fitness Equipment, where you'll find the latest in cutting edge exercise equipment. Our experienced staff will work closely with you and your family to help select the right equipment to meet all your fitness goals. Thanks, Steve. Does your company or municipality need a fitness room? Then Dave's your man. We have the knowledge and expertise to set up any size fitness room. For the best in home and commercial exercise equipment, visit a Precision Fitness Equipment location near you or online at precisionfitnessequipment.com.